Uh, this is my first instructional video on using Affinity Photo. And this particular session is going to be covering the vector scope. The vector scope is used to give you a sense on what color something is in terms of a circular scope. First, I'm going to simply open up a new blank canvas. And on that canvas, I'm going to put a red rectangle. And here's our red rectangle. Great. If you do not have the scopes shown in the uh, upper right over here or anywhere else on your screen, simply go to window and turn on scopes like it is here. Turns it off, turns it on. Under the topic of scope, there's a pull down and you can pick whichever scope you want to look at. This one is the vector scope. Now, white is not really a color, neither is black. But the rest of these on this scope give an indication in terms of saturation going from the center, there's zero saturation and going all the way out to the largest diameter is the most saturation. So if you see the R here, that means red. The MG is magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. And this line that is called I is basically a reference skin tone line. So if you look on this red line and you see that circle, in the center of the circle there's a little dot. That dot indicates that something is red. Now watch what happens. I'm going to go to color. I'm going to pick this guy and I'm going to change it to, I don't know, something else. Let's just say light blue. You go back to the scope and you see that dot moved over to here. Let's go back to that color. Let's go towards red. Now you can see how the three top lines here is RGB. The numbers on the right go from 0 to 255. So we want it to be 100% red. So if I, well, just for grins, again, if I, if I move this up and you go back to the scope, you can see that the dot is not on that line that's red. So let's go back to the color and turn this down. And you will see that now we have 25500. It's all red, no green, no blue. You look at that scope and on that line, perfectly on that line, is that dot. Let's add another rectangle and have this rectangle be blue. Or something close to blue, right? We can, we're going to fix that in a minute. So let's pick something close to blue and just add a rectangle. And if you look up here, you can see that there's something that's close to blue, but not 100% blue. So again, we're going to go to color and you can see that there's some red in there. So let's get rid of the red. Zero red, zero green, 255 blue. Go to the scopes and sure enough, there's a dot in the center of this circle over here that is blue. So if we're talking about skin tones and we assume that this line for I is a good reference skin tone, one would say, well, how do we correct it? Let's say we have some dot somewhere near it. How do we, how do we move it over? So let's assume that we want this red rectangle to be blue. So I'll take the red rectangle and I'm going to open up HSL adjustment. There it is right there. So it's only affecting, let's move it around and you can see that it's adjusting just the red, right? And then if you look, if I let go, by the way, if, if you move it around, that dot doesn't move in the scope. It takes, a, it takes a second until you stop. So you can see that clearly I'm close to yellow here, right here, right? Obviously, if I want to go towards blue, I'm near magenta. I keep going. You can see that dot going towards the blue. And then, by the way, if you put your mouse over this and use the scroll wheel, you can uh, adjust the color. So if I quickly move the scroll wheel, you can see the color changing on the rectangle. But anyway, so we're going to get this dot dead center on the other dot that was there. And, and I'm not even looking at this, the screen over here on the left. But on the right, you can see that both dots are perfectly aligned and both colors are in fact the same color. Okay, so now I'm going to click on stock on the right hand side and I typed in the word skin and did a search and you can see that there's a bunch of photographs here that give a, an idea that they have some kind of skin in them. <laughs> so let's take this one here and move it in. Now I'm going to just simply make a copy of this so I can preserve the original one and hide this one. And I'm going to put the scopes on 
vector scope. Here's what I said before that the line I gives a strong indication that there's a lot of skin tones in here. But there's also a lot of other stuff. You can see things sort of on the, towards the center, but going towards blue. Well, that's probably the background. So here's a little tip for you. If you want to really get this skin tone checked, you want to verify the skin tone is accurate. By the way, let's just do, do an example. I'm going to do something real quick uh, before I do that. So I just want to skew it with an HSL adjustment. You see how that's clearly not correct, right? And you can see that the line up here went way off that eye line, the, the reference skin tone line. Let me put that back, right? So get rid of the HSL adjustment now. You got the, you got the idea there. So now I'm going to add a mask. Click to add a mask. I'm going to hit B for brush and I'm going to paint in black, which is basically going to erase all this stuff and the background. Get rid of the hair, get rid of the lips. Get rid of all this in here, right? And if you look at the vector scope, it's getting cleaner and cleaner in terms of uh, going towards one line or, or one clean line or one dot, in fact. But what you do see is it, it's, it's, a, it's a cluster of them. And what that is, is the different shade uh, of the tone. Essentially, if I if I took this down to one color like we did with red or blue, it would be one single dot. But this is a good way to check your skin tone. So if this was like way off to one side, you can you can dial it in and get the skin tone properly. Turn this picture to its uh, normal state. You just simply get rid of the mask and, and you're back. That's one method of checking. We're going to do another one. Let's pick let's pick this one. There it is. And you look at the vector scope and it's got a lot of stuff going on, doesn't it? So I'm going to do the same method, make a copy, hide the copy, make a mask, hit B for brush, right? Since there's a lot of eye makeup, obviously lipstick, let's just get rid of that too. Give some tones here. Obviously there's stuff on the cheek. I'm going to leave that for this example. These varying tones that are dark, I kind of think of them as being sort of neutral, but I'll get rid of them anyway. And what we're left with, again, is somewhat a straight line. Now, let's do something. Let's find an exact dot that represents that skin tone. So we're going to right click, merge visible. What that's going to do is going to make a new layer right there. And it's a direct copy of all the stuff underneath it, you know, it's merging visible, everything that's visible. Now with this layer selected, we're going to go into filters, blur, average. And what it does is it creates a one hue representation of the skin tone. I'm going to hit V just to make it smaller. Now here's kind of an interesting trick. You might say, well, it's really hard to see if that's on the line or not. Good point. Let's hit HSL adjustment. Let's increase the saturation shift all the way up. Now you see that dot is not actually on the line. So now if I hover over here and move that dot with the hue shift, you can see I'm really close to being on the line right there pretty much, right? So now this being that it's the top layer is really affecting everything underneath it. Of course, you know that. So if I turn on the original picture and I reduce the HSL adjustment by double clicking this, I'm setting it back to zero. That has basically corrected the skin tone. Not to say that there's anything wrong with what was there, but this is just a lesson in terms of getting the skin tone on that line. Again, it doesn't have to be on the line. This is just a personal taste thing. If you, for instance, had a, a picture from someone else that had an incorrect color temperature, you know, the native picture had a wrong color temperature. This is a way to fix it. Well, let's say we have a picture that is off in terms of the hue, but let's assume that this picture on the screen is like a good reference. We want to use this as a reference. Well, you already saw how I made this uh, plaque here, this one right there, uh, in order to get a reference skin tone, right? So let's add the other picture in where I deliberately skewed 
the the heel on it clearly see it's 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 pinkish it's it's off and if you had two of these people in the same image it would look wrong so let's let's go ahead and go through the same process of getting a plaque such as this one i'll do the same thing i did before right make a mask of that hit b for brush let's turn off all these other layers for now great and then increase my brush size and just get rid of all this stuff and that sorry sorry <laughs> and like i did before right click on this and hit uh, merge visible a uh, an average plaque and there it is so hit v i'm gonna make it a lot smaller i'm gonna just hide the mask for that i'm gonna put uh our fair lady on there in the background let's make this a bunch smaller we have the the target plaque and we have this the source plaque obviously they're different so now we go to the info tab up here on the upper right. Again, with that, if you want to see info, turn it on over here. So I'm going to, first we have to look at this, by the way, if you look on the left, it says RGBA as an alpha channel. This one here is uh, CMYK. Click this, make sure you're working in the same system, RGB to RGB. If you click this bottom icon, I'm going to get a sample of this one. So wherever this dot is, if I move the dot up to here, you're going to see the colors change. See how the colors are changing? Okay. And if I take this one and I get a sample of that one. So basically what this is telling you is that the one on the left is our target RGBs. And the one on the right is our RGB values for her skin tone, the, uh, the pinkish one. So what are we going to do to fix that? Well, I'm going to move this layer here down below that one. I'm going to go to curves because curves is where you could adjust the individual RGB values. You'll see in just a second. And put a curves adjustment right there. And it's, it's affecting this picture. Let's not worry about the background right now. So what we do is we, instead of selecting master, we select individually the red. We click the picker, click on here and drag up or down. If I go up or down, that the red channel in the upper right hand corner in the info panel is changing. So we want that to be 159, that's 157, 158, 159, great. Now we go into the green channel, do the same thing. And of course this is changing this plaque, so we're gonna have to affect this girl, so she is affected by the curves adjustment. All right, so we go to blue. You can see, by the way, that the two plaques are getting quite close to each other. You see that the reds and the greens and the blue values are exact matches. So now, to merely affect just this girl and not the other girl slide the curves adjustment offer it to this layer and there you have it if you want to get rid of these dots here you can just click the mouse button right there her skin tones are much closer to matching the other girl so this is the before the after before the after go like this i just want to see her skin tones with the other girl turn her back on and you can see that they're quite similar <laughs> well i hope you enjoyed the video and i will try to make other videos that cover some of these difficult topics so send me some comments below and i will make other instructional videos that will help you with your editing process